What's up, guys? It's your boy Beatty back again with another boy, episode. Eric. Oh, yeah, I didn't give you a chance to say that. <laughs> <laughs> We're back with another episode of Fluff and Puff Radio. Today, we got a special guest, former WWE wrestler, best selling author, owner of <laughs> Sexy as Hell Beard Company. What is it called? Beard or <laughs> Beard Care. Beard Care. <laughs> Your boy, Jason Paul, a.k.a. JTG. What's up, guys? Yo, thanks for having me on the show. And cool, I like that introduction. You know? I forgot I did all that stuff. You know? <laughs> that's like awesome. Thanks so much for joining us. This is, I'm huh? super excited. I'm going to try not to sound like a Mark this whole time. Okay, no problem, man. I'll excuse you. <laughs> <laughs> so first and foremost, Jay, how you been? How you feeling? How's this uh, quarantine been uh, treating you? Quarantine's been, uh, been all right. You know, a lot of... A lot of People are complaining and whining about it, but I made the best out of the situation. You know, as soon as the quarantine started, I went on, um, what's that thing where people sell stuff on? Offer Up? What is that thing? Offer, offer up. up. There's another one. Offer Up and there's another one. Uh, I got me. Craigslist? Huh? Craigslist? Craigslist. Similar to Craigslist, but not, not, not Craigslist. But I went, on, uh, I went on one of those apps and um, met with somebody and I bought me a PS4 ASAP. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah, I haven't played video games in years and I'm catching up. Mm-hmm. This quarantine since uh, started since in March. Mm-hmm. I've already beaten uh, Spider Man, Red mm-hmm. Dead Redemption, Final Fantasy VII the remake. Yeah, I've been pretty busy. <laughs> I remember, like Eric doesn't watch TV at all, and then during quarantine he finally that's started. That's good. That's watching, good. Yeah, he finally started watching the shows mm-hmm. I, I told him to watch like years ago. Oh yeah, now I'm super into it. Like I can't stop. Before that, all TV, I watched was wrestling. Netflix? Do you mean Netflix? Oh, you mean TV in general? Yeah. Yeah, okay, like, oh, it's just like Netflix shows. Like I've been watching Breaking Bad, Ozark. Like, oh, you ever seen Breaking Bad? Oh man, yeah. that was my shit. <laughs> yeah, that was my first time seeing it recently. He oh, never watched Walking I, Dead. I, he never seen Walking Dead, Game of Thrones, none of that, right? I haven't seen Game of Thrones yet. Um, oh. Walking Dead, I gave it a shot, but it's too much. It oh. keeps getting repetitive with the zombies, so I had to take. I had to call. I like more realistic shows like Breaking oh. Bad. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I'm into like the supernatural shit. Podcast is over. Let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> Last Kingdom is pretty good. I don't know if you got into that yet, but uh, Was that? that's a pretty oh, bad. I haven't seen Last that. Kingdom. It's on. It's on Netflix. Last Kingdom. Yeah, I think I started it. That's the one with the guy with the with the bun with the ponytail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The fade. He got the fade. Dude, the Jeff Hardy fade. Wait, well, that's that's third season. You know, he he, he oh, cuts okay. it. Third, but the first season, he's got the long, long, long uh, gold locks. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, um. Has, has quarantine changed anything for you, like, uh, or all good? Um. Well, during this quarantine, I lost my like my best friend, my tag team partner. Um. I was, you know, every, everything's been going great, and then that situation happened, and I'm slowly, you know, I'm getting uh, I'm not saying over it, but I'm I'm definitely doing a lot better, a lot better than I thought I would be doing. Yeah, I bet like uh, everywhere you go, like you go work out. I bet a lot of people would, like ask you that question like, like, like yeah and then also definitely on social media too you know like, I'm, I'm i mean i appreciate it um especially when it first happened but now i'm like you know i'm, I'm you know i'm moving forward you know that's, i don't want to get bombarded too much with it you know yeah. kind of for for those of you who don't know uh JC, jcg was part of a tag team uh crew called uh crime time and it, it was him and his partner uh shad and shad where we suddenly passed away and not too long ago here folks yeah but um it's wild, man. Life is life is short, man. Like while we here, we, we gotta make an impact. You know what I'm saying? Live it to the fullest. That's, that's what I plan on doing every day. You know, it's crazy. Like recently, I've been thinking more like that, and it's like I'm like by nature, I'm like cheap. Like I don't do anything for myself. Like I don't <laughs> have anything. I'll want something, I'll just never get it, and I'll just save money, save money, save money. I'll never spend it on anything. And recently, I just been like, hey, you know what? I like that. Let me just get something. Let me just get this. Yeah. It's good to treat yourself every once in a while, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, I'm not going to spend all my money or anything, but, like, yeah, yeah. It's, okay to, it's okay to work hard and then enjoy yourself because you just keep working for this end goal. Like, there's never going to be the end goal. You're never going to get to a point where you're like, oh, that's it. I'll stop. I, I think I have a magic number. I think I have a magic number where I'm like, you know what? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? You feel, you feel that way? You feel like there's, like, a, like a set goal or just keep going? Eric, you can hear me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's that? I'm sorry. I said, I said, how you feel? Do you feel like you have an end goal of, like, something you want to yeah, read? I'm pretty much the same, like you said. Like, if I want to treat myself to something, like, within reason, like, I'll always do it because life's too short, man. Like, um, I, I'm very, like, uh, I'm not frugal at all. 
yeah. I, I'm like the opposite. Yeah, that's good. Um, and uh, to to, uh, to to further elaborate about the COVID, do, do you feel like this is overkill? As far as we, we've been on, on lockdown over three months, and from what I'm hearing, we're gonna go back into lockdown. Do, do you feel like the government handled this well, or do you feel like it's been like a shit show? <laughs> Well, 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 me personally, uh, uh, I'll let everybody know right now, I'm a conspiracy theorist. So I definitely <laughs> believe that uh, <laughs> that it's uh, definitely, there's a lot of hype to it. Numbers are being um, exaggerated. Sure. And, um, you know, I'm de I, de I definitely believe like some, uh, some people passed away um, and, you know, people are getting sick, but I don't, it's, it's like a fever or, or flu, you know, it's, it's going to happen. Exactly. Yeah, 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 but I definitely and the mask bullshit and then it's like people yeah. who people who who got sick were wearing masks. It's like the mask is not gonna. It's, right now, it's just a cool trend. Everybody's wearing a mask, mm -hmm. and then people got uh, cloth masks. It's, now it's more about being yeah, I'm, getting cool I'm masks. On the same page. I think help. it's like all bullshit with the masks. Yeah. Uh, so Jay, I wanted to ask you. Like, I saw uh, a couple wrestlers. I think only two: Loki and Austin Aries. Like, they gave their honest thoughts of saying the masks were bullshit, and then, like, everybody's giving them so much hate, like all the other wrestlers. They're, like, getting yeah. destroyed for it. Yeah, like, you, why is nobody else speaking up? Like, I know they're not the only ones who feel like that. Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, I think the mask is, is bullshit. I, I even heard it, it, could, it, could go, it, could, um, it could go through your eyes. It's like, so what are you going to do, wear goggles? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, go fly but I'm not going to put that on Twitter because I already know there's going to be a witch hunt. So I just keep that, yeah. <laughs> I'll keep that to myself. But if you happen to listen to this podcast, then, you know. <laughs> you know what's funny? Maybe there will be an article on the, all the dirt sheets. <laughs> <laughs> you have to wear goggles. <laughs> so check this out, right? My, my, both my mom and my sister are both nurses, right? When they deliver these masks to the hospital, on, on the pack, you know what it says? Does it not prevent COVID-19. Exactly. Oh, yeah. They know this already. <laughs> yeah, but with, with, with the the the, I'm not. I don't want to be offensive and say sheep, but <laughs> yeah, the I sheep. Mean, the, you know, they, <laughs> the sheep. Oh. You know, they watch the news and we gotta wear masks. We gotta wear masks. Um, oh, I got. They check their wallet, cell phone. Oh shit, my mask. I left it inside. You know. <laughs> Bro, it, it's like I, I felt like before this, when other countries think about America, they think about like these rebels that are like, if the government tries to control us, we're gonna come out with guns and be like, no, you can't control us. And then everybody's just like, okay, I guess we're just, you know, on house arrest. It's also crazy because I've been to Texas. I've been to Arizona. It's crazy how different it is in every place. Like in Texas, nobody gives a shit. Whereas here, if you go anywhere without a mask, people look at you like you are the fucking virus. Yeah, yeah today in my, in my Uber, you know, I had my mask on, but I didn't have it over my, uh, <laughs> have it over my yeah. nose. And the uh, the driver was like, "Excuse me, sir, can you can you please wear your mask properly and put it over your nose?" Oh I just gave him a long stare. I'm like looking at him through the rear mirror. I'm like, "Are you motherfucking? Are you serious, right?" <laughs> and I just stared at him uncomfortably, and you know, I gave him what four stars. I was like, I can't believe, <laughs> I can't believe this guy. Bro, it, it's 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 wild. But okay, but I mean, you guys, most of the time I just wear it uh, around my chin just so they shut the fuck up. And it's funny because yeah. nobody says shit most of the time. It's like. What what the hell is the point of that? I think I think this whole thing has been a shit show, and nobody it's, it's like nobody knows anything. It's like first it's like kids and adult kids and older elderly can get it. Then it's all oh, kids can't get it. Then it's um everything is only elderly, only the elderly elderly. Yeah, <laughs> and then and but the, didn't you say your mom got it? And yeah, she was perfectly fine. Yeah, so my my, my mom is uh fifty nine. She's about to be sixty. She works at a nursing home. So obviously nursing yeah. home, you got all the patients. They wanted to make sure everybody was good. So they tested, you know, all the workers. Everybody had it, I think, besides maybe one person. Everybody had it. Come on. And they, did, were really? and they were all everybody had it. Nobody had symptoms. She said she said no symptoms. And then those, those tests uh, this those tests, I wish I saved it, but there was an article, this this gentle this gentleman, this African gentleman, mm -hmm. um, they were sent a bunch of tests and they tested they tested. Um, they gave the blood, and they gave they gave fruit. They took uh, samples from fruit. They took samples from bats, and, and they all and, and they all had COVID. It's like these tests are bullshit. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, and right now they just started uh, testing everybody more, so they're acting like there's this huge rise in cases. No, there's just a rise in the tests, and everybody's asymptomatic. Like they stopped talking about the death rates completely. It's so it's all bullshit. It. But look, if you have a whole nursing home full of people like above 90 years old and everybody's positive, 
why is everybody not dead? Exactly. <laughs> so either the test the bullshit or the virus is not that potent. Like, you know what I'm saying? These, bro, like not, nothing adds up. Nothing is making sense to me. I'm like, what, what, is, even, what is even going on here? You know what I'm saying? And then uh, there was a video. It was a, it was a hot mic. The mic was on. It was in the White House. It was like before like a Trump speech or whatever. Yeah. Um, you had two guys talking. I don't know, Secret Service. I don't know who they were. They had like black suits on. And the guy was like, oh, don't worry. Nobody has a mask here on. Nobody here has a mask on, but everybody's already, uh, everybody's already vaccinated here. I'm like, vaccinated? What? What? What, what do you, there's a vaccination? What, what are we talking about here? So it's like. If there is, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't, I don't, I don't want it either. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I, I don't want it either, bro. But, but my my immune system is off the chain. I, the, the amount of supplements I take in the morning, <laughs> my white my white blood cells don't tolerate shit. They see something, they say, "What the fuck are you doing here?" And they fuck you up on sight. Ain't having it. <laughs> this isn't the first virus. It's not even the first. Uh, uh, it's not even the first COVID nineteen coronavirus. You know I'm saying so. Our bodies are made. Our immune systems are made to get stronger and deal with these yeah. things. That's why we're alive. If not. Our ancestors would have died years ago. Died, yeah. There's been there's been viruses stronger than this. Trust me. Like there, there's been every kind of virus you can imagine. We've survived it. We're here. We, we made it because our bodies are made to fight this and get stronger. If you stay home for a whole year, your immune your immune system is gonna be shit. I don't get allergies this year. I've been getting allergies. Yeah, why do almost people not get it? Crackheads. I, I still see crackheads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a good question, though. The homeless people. What about them? Shit. Bro. Yeah, you go by Gulf Venice, you see them all sitting out there. They're all fine. They're all fine. Yeah. They, they, they're, they're not sanitizing their hands, staying six feet apart. No gloves, <laughs> no masks. They, they, they're digging in the trash, but they're fine. Like, I, bro, they, Living they, their best life. There's something really wrong here. And then um, I have I have friends in China. You know, every bodybuilder has friends in China, right, Eric? So, <laughs> oh, of course. I, do. I have plenty. <laughs> so I got friends in China, and they're like, oh, everything is fine. Everything is open. I'm like... That's like I spill water over here, and then my bedroom gets wet. Like, how does it start there, and everybody's fine? Like, what, what, what is, what's happening? It started there. Everybody there is fine, living their life. They just chilling. Uh -huh. I'm like, there's something, there's something wrong about this whole picture. Well, what pisses me off the most is that we had this whole lockdown. It didn't change anything, and now people just want another lockdown. Like, they still believe the shit. Like, how? Like, how are people <laughs> so stupid? And, and hey. Uh -huh. All I'm saying, if they do another lockdown, that's all cool with me. Just don't close the gyms. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I'm filming a gym prank this Sunday. I was going to be so pissed if they closed it before then because they closed down Arizona gyms. Ooh. So, Boy, yeah, I was really worried about that too. I think today they said they're closing down bars. Like, I keep hearing this, that it's already official now. So, What's yeah. the difference between bars and Walmart, though? Like, why bars? No, man. I Like, why bars, why gyms? Like, what's different between that or, like, the same way you stay, you stay six feet apart at, like you said, Walmart, you know, or at the or at the liquor store. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I see the liquor store. People just be around there hanging out. Like, why why is that okay? But then gyms, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what's the sense? Just none of it makes any sense to anybody who is rational, honestly. We're, we're making it up as we go along, man. <laughs> so, here's my thing like what what do you think is going to be the solution because obviously logic is out the window but let, let's say if me you and Eric, oh, i mean you know my thoughts i think as soon as trump gets reelected, like the shit's going to be over he's just going to open everything back up Wait, but, but but the power is in his hand because we have governors like the governor of uh of cali doesn't necessarily you know have to have have to listen to him you know what i'm saying he can't overrule them. I mean, I, I, I don't know politics that well, but but, but, my, <laughs> but my understanding, like, it's up to the governor, like, because Trump from the beginning, he said he didn't want anything closed. But I mean, exactly. I, but, I feel like he got pressured into doing it by all these Democrats. But but, but I'm saying, but they they still closed it. So I feel like it, you know, what I'm saying like I, I feel like it's not up to him because if it was up to him, I don't think anything would close. Like he 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 doesn't, he doesn't give a fuck. Like. <laughs> yeah, but once he gets reelected, he has nothing to lose. Like he doesn't have to ple try to please anybody anymore. That's yeah. just what I'm waiting for. I don't. A lot of people think everything that's going on is is, is related to the to the election. Like the Democrats have their agenda, the the Red Party have their agenda, and everybody's kind of like you know what I'm saying. So all of this like a, all like a political. There's, there's, de there's definitely a agenda going on, and is I think it's bigger than the whole COVID situation. I think uh, so. like right, right when the whole. Um, quarantine thing started you know i went down a uh, deep rabbit hole 
Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, this is just a check. This COVID thing is just a a very strategic chess move. And um, it was it was the name of the YouTube video. It was called The End of the Cabal. Mm-hmm. C-A-B-A-L. Check that out on YouTube. I don't even know if it's still there. I know it got taken down once, but they was exposing a lot of uh, stuff that's going on in the government, deep state, and the reason behind COVID. And, that, and then I went down the rabbit hole and started doing more research. And yeah, there's definitely an agenda going on. So I, I definitely checked that uh, video out. Fall, it's called Fall of the Cabal. My bad. Fall of the Cabal. Yeah, it, there's something deeper. But what do you guys think is, is going to be the end of this? Like, but besides, let's say besides the election, like, do you just, uh, me personally, I feel like, are you honestly just open things up? Listen, whoever wants to stay home can stay home. If you stay That's home, what it's going to be from the start, honestly. Like Eric said, this tells us nothing changed because we did, we did this three-month lockdown. We opened up and we're back to lockdown. So the numbers just went right back up. So like, you know what I'm saying? So all we did was prolong the... And then, did, it, did it go back up? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's what I heard from somebody too. Like they started testing more now and then they're planning a second lockdown. And then once the lockdown starts, they'll start testing less to make it seem like it worked. Oh my gosh. So and, and, and they're not going really by, hope They're not going by deaths. They're going by cases. So exactly. The, like how long can they keep doing this shit and people keep falling for it? It's just unbelievable. Cases don't matter as much as death because if like everybody gets a cold, Nothing is going to shut down because it's not a death sentence. It, <laughs> it's, a, it's a sickness, you know what I'm saying? So it's like if everybody gets sick, if people aren't dying, then we don't, it doesn't have to be that extreme. Like we, we can't just destroy the country over a virus. Like what, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I was talking to a well, I, I don't know, I probably shouldn't show you to say his name anymore because we, we might go back into lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was talking to this gentleman that owns a gym and, um, <laughs> and he was like, this is, this is over for, for gym business. Like, He's like, this is like, even though he's able to make a little bit of money, like this is nothing, you know what I'm saying? And he's paying fines and, or, or, well, I don't think he paid a fine yet, but eventually he feels like he's gonna have to spend some money. Like he's paying his lawyer at least. So he's like, he thinks this, this is the end for movie theaters, gym, uh, gym owners and, you know, uh, all small business owners. And I think he might be right. I, I can't see, I can't see most people surviving this. Like they're closing down 24 hour in goals location. So imagine like a small gym. Yeah. Uh, how can you survive? You know what I'm saying? Like how? Yeah. Well, because you're gonna get a, a, a SBA loan of a thousand dollars. What the hell is a thousand dollars, bro? What the I hell? Know. That's like my food bill for like a couple. <laughs> of- <laughs> <laughs> and it's like all for nothing at the end of the day. Like the death rate is already a joke. But then you factor in that they every, anybody who dies who has COVID, like even if they get a heart attack or a car accident, like they just say they died from COVID. Like it's it's just ridiculous. I think. Not to prolong this count for too long, I, I, I'm going to just say one more thing, but I, I'll say this. Uh, America is like a place where we take pride in freedom. Listen, if, if I'm willing to risk my life to feed my family, that's my choice. Yeah, that's my, yeah. That's my choice. Exactly. I, that choice. And I don't even think it's that big of a risk because, you know, but I don't want to downplay, downplay the virus, but I don't think it's that scary. I'm going to be honest with you. I think it's much more scary to say, I can't feed you a hey, son. Yeah, you're gonna have to eat some cup noodles today because I can't, I can't, I can't feed you. Like yeah, that's way worse to me than than than. Being well, I can't feed you because I can't, I can't find my mask. I can't leave. That. <laughs> I can't leave that. I don't know, man. I feel like this is America, and I, I don't think America should be ran like this. Like, I, I think this is just bad governing. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I don't, I don't know how how we're gonna get past this. But the way the the way they're treating this. Doesn't look like we're gonna get past it anytime soon. It's, it's sad, but I, I think the whole thing is 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 a shame. Until me. November, that's only what um, five more months. But that's I mean, even one month is too fucking. One day is too fucking long. <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to get ready for like the amateur Olympian stuff, and now I'm like, I would hate to prep for anything and, and not have yeah. it. So I'm like, I think this year is in the garbage. I think just throw throw it in the garbage. It's over. It's Twenty over. yeah. It's broken. Just take, yeah, take it back. Take twenty twenty back. <laughs> Get a refund. <laughs> do you watch basketball? Like, do you, do you do you follow the NBA at all, uh, Jason? I love the playoffs, but not really. I was never really uh, big into sports. Just just professional wrestling. I'm a, I was a weirdo <laughs> as a kid. Well, uh, what do you think of the wrestling right now with no fans? It's it's hard to watch. It's very hard to I watch. Uh, I watch WrestleMania, and I'll, I'll let that slide. You know the. the <laughs> You know, they, they did a lot of um, 
uh, what you, they made up for it with the you know Undertaker versus AJ Styles, the the Boneyard match, the cinematic type of uh, match, and and that that was pretty good. The latter match is pretty good, but other than that, the other matches were kind of like eh, like you you professional wrestling you need an audience you feed off the energy of the crowd you know, i don't want to perform in front of a, a <laughs> crowd that's just is very weird <laughs> yeah uh, what do you think of the wrestlers that are sitting home right now and they just choose not to work at all like how do they not have way more heat oh they definitely do got heat you know, you know <laughs> so some, some some are able to pull it off and, and don't care they got yeah. we call it in the business f you money like roman reigns he <laughs> had enough he yeah. has enough f you money and he could stay home. And somebody like Sami Zayn, like no offense, but like it's, in this case, he would be kind of justified. Like it's like just sitting home yeah. for what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sami Zayn said, "I am not getting that that COVID. I'm staying home." Yeah, they go. So and in, case, in, did get it. <laughs> in case anybody's wondering what I'm rubbing on my bicep, it's an anti-freeze CBD gel from Stonewall Hemp Co. Link is going to be in the description box below. Hashtag I you know like <laughs> <laughs> No. But yeah, I've been getting really bad to the night. It's like, honestly, I don't know what's going on with me. But, um, but yeah, Jason. So who, who is Jason? Like, forget, put JTG to the side. Who is Jason? Like, uh, where are you from originally? How was, it, how, uh, how was your childhood? How was things growing up? Were you, were you a rich kid? <laughs> you're a poor oh, kid? Man, I wish. <laughs> So uh, Jason, Jason Paul, you know, chill, laid back, um, very humble, uh, very creative. And um, I like to use my creativity to, you know, launch new projects, uh, ideas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a risk taker, a calculated risk taker. I got to mm -hmm. throw that calculated in there because I just don't do, do, do stuff just to do it. It's got to be, you know, strategic and calculated. Take me um, back. Sorry to cut you off, but take me back to the beginning, though. So to the beginning, born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. I was raised by my um, my mom and older sister. Um, yeah, wow. my, my mom was a big my mom was a big wrestling fan. So you know, at the age of two, I already knew I wanted to be a professional wrestler. And I was jumping off the couch and hitting elbow drops on my on my sister's cabbage patch doll. So I, I, I <laughs> Merchant, did, so okay. So so did every kid do that? I, I thought I was the only one that used to like wrestle with my brothers and like jumping. Attack dog. Oh, everybody. Oh, I couldn't wait for my cousins to come over, put them in a sharp poodle or a Boston crab. Oh man, they I, I would do that shit in school. Like I would put the kids in like a in cross face and then yeah. get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, the pedigree. Oh, I, I almost killed. Oh, I did the pedigree too a couple of times. Bro, I, I almost killed <laughs> a little boy. And, and, and especially during ninety five, ninety six, when Shawn Michaels was like, you know, getting popular with the super kick. Oh, people was catching coming around the corner. <laughs> Hold that. <laughs> oh. That's a little uh, before me and Eric's time a little bit. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, before I was even born. Ninety-five. <laughs> oh man, super kicks was very, very popular. Everybody was catching a super kick. Not as popular as now, though. <laughs> oh, now everybody. Now. Oh my god. Is it popular? I can't fucking see another super kick. <laughs> Is it popular now? You said the super kick. Yeah, everybody's doing it oh, really? right now. Like everybody does a super kick. Like it's not like special. Oh, oh, you mean you mean in wrestling? In wrestling. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant like. Like just okay, okay, so, okay. So uh, back to you, JTG. So okay, yeah, yeah. yeah so um, so I always wanted to be a wrestler, but you know, being a wrestling fan in New York was kind of like you, you go watch it. But the way I was watching it, like I had all the toys, I had posters on my wall. I was going to the wrestling shows. I didn't watch nothing else. You know, I didn't watch the NBA or football. I was the same way. Yeah, I was just a weird. I was like a nerd, but I, but a wrestling nerd. <laughs> Made fun and, of huh? They made fun of you, right? And then I, why you don't watch basketball? And yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just, it just wasn't into like once you watch wrestling. To me, it was like it's different. If I was gonna watch basketball, Michael Jordan need to be cutting a promo on his, <laughs> on his, his opponent. Like I needed that type of excitement. Like, like a yeah, that's how player. I always felt about UFC too. Yeah, like, it's yeah, boring. No drama. Yeah, yeah. I need that extra. Uh, I need that talking shit factor. You know, when I get you on the field, you know, I needed that. So yeah. I didn't get in. I didn't get into any other sports. And then um, th when I got into high school, it was, it was, you know, when it came a decision to, uh, you know, start making decisions, to, you know, what is, what is your goals after high school? Like, are you going to college? Are you going to the Army? Are you going to Air Force? Are you going to sell drugs? Is, is, you know, what are you going to do? You need to do something after. And I was like, I knew what I wanted to do. But to come out and say it, it sounds like very crazy. You know, like, I'm going to be a professional wrestler. Like, all right, stop. Like, so what are you going to do? 
like, no, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be a professional wrestler. And they're like, all right, that could be your plan B, but what are you gonna do? Are you gonna go to school? Or, like, no, my plan A and B and C is professional. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be a wrestler, and you know, I told people that they kind of like looked at me crazy. But my mom was my biggest supporter, and uh, she helped me get through a lot of ups and downs, like during my training, training years in Louisville, Kentucky. So right after high school, um, I went to I went to a few different wrestling schools, but I eventually landed in Louisville, Kentucky at OVW, and that's where I got my big break. At um, I got my contract when I was 21. Wow! So I moved. So I moved out of my mom's house when I was uh, 17. Uh, around 18, 19, 20, I was in um, Louisville, Kentucky. I did the independent shows. You know, I had to uh, work my way up through the um, the ranks, you know, taking out trash, t- uh, uh, taking down and putting up rings, wrestling rings, um, cleaning yeah. up the locker room. And, you know, I, I've been, I got noticed. You know, I was there every every week, you know, uh, um, getting, getting seen. And then I was able to finally get noticed and, uh, they put Shad and I together as a tag team, and then after that, it was it, it was he made history. It was history after that. That was uh, that was at twenty one. Yes. So as of right now, I'm the I'm the youngest African American to be signed to a WWE contract on the Raw roster. Like twenty one. Yeah. How, how old was Shad at this time? He was probably twenty three or twenty four. Oh wow. As w- yeah. it, it takes a lot of balls to like bet on yourself like that, especially at that age, because. I remember, I mean, I, I played ball, I played basketball, football, but I don't know if I was willing to, like, bet on myself like that and, like, and, like put it all on the line, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. Play. I don't think I was willing to do that. So, I, it takes a lot of balls to, to be able to do that. So, but, but did you know? Yeah, I, I, I live, sleep, and eat professional, like, professional wrestling. There's nothing else that I want. I would, I would have never been happy with myself, like, not chasing my, my dream. Would, would you say your confidence level was, like, on 100? Did you feel like there's no way uh, this is not going to happen, like, <laughs> I'm not going to stop. Like, I'll be on my deathbed still trying to do this. Or was it kind of like, oh, let me try it out? No, I, um, I had, I had, I was losing. I, when I went, when I went to, I had that mentality. And then I was like, when I moved there, I was 180 pounds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, I didn't have any, no size. Um, I didn't have no athletic ability. I just had a dream. Mm-hmm. And, uh, everything, I, I learned how to, I, I learned to be athletic. You know, I, I'm I'm able now to do crazy shit off the top rope and from from outside the ring to inside the ring. You know, just I built I, and I got my confidence. I'm, I'm my confidence right now is through the roof. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I actually trained for pro wrestling myself for a couple of years. I don't know if you knew that before. I did not know that uh, at all. What, did you, train at? Like, huh? what did you train? At? What did you train at? Oh. I trained uh, a little bit with uh, Rikishi at Knox Pro, oh, and no. then I got injured. Then I trained for a little bit with Brian Kendrick at his school, um, uh-huh. but I could never get past like the business side of it. Like once I realized what it really was, like I was just out right away. Yeah, I could. Yeah, the and business. That's why a lot of politics. A lot, a lot yeah. of politics. For some reason, a lot of people so, like message me asking for advice for wrestling. I don't know why they would ask me. Like, they'd probably be better off asking somebody who's actually been in a high level. Uh-huh. But um, I always they ask me like, what, like, how should I train to be a wrestler? I'm like, I tell them obviously work on your cardio, but you gotta mentally really prepare yourself the most because you really do not know what you're getting in for. Yeah, I'm probably gonna start recommending that they read your books. Yeah, I was just about to plug my book. Yeah, I was about to tell anybody who wants to be a professional wrestler who wants to get like a little sneak peek of what you're getting into. Uh, the name of the book is "Damn Why Did I Write This Book," and the second one is "Damn Why Did I Write This Book Too." <laughs> yeah, you should not, not get into wrestling until you read both of those books, and then realize if you really want it. It's like like professional wrestling is like a it's a fraternity. You yeah, know, oh, 100%. You, it's like it's like the hazing, the same culture. Oh yeah, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna break you in. And if you belong here, you know the the ones that stay, you know they they prove. Like even with wrestlers, um, even wrestlers I don't like, we have a mutual, con- like we have a a bond. You know, like we went through what we went through, and here we are today. Right. Uh, what are your thoughts on our truth? Huh? What are your thoughts on our truth? Um, he's cool. Okay, he's cool. <laughs> he's, he's out there. He's, his character is very out there, and so, uh, he, what he's doing has been working, and he still has a job. Yeah. He's, so, he's, so you know, he dated my mom for like a year. Huh? 
You know, he dated my mom for like a year. Wow, I, I did not know. <laughs> That's how we did that picture back at SummerSlam 2009 because he asked you for it. You, brought, you obviously don't remember, but yeah. Yeah, I've heard that. that. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, he used to be K Quick, right? He had the little braids. Yeah, K Quick. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, I think I heard from your interviews that the little Jimmy thing was your idea originally. Is that true? Well, it wasn't called Little Jimmy. I, I uh, we used to have promo class in, in WWE before before yeah. like we had to, like some certain certain uh, talent had to come to the arena extra early, like a handful, and we would have a promo class. And Vince McMahon was the te- was like when he wasn't too busy, he would be like the uh, he'd be the one running it, and uh, he will. You, like you had to have like good improv skills. Like mm-hmm. he would take something random, like a pep, like a, a bottle, and he was like, "All right, you see this bottle? You're having a match with it this Sunday. Sell it to me." It's like that's an inanimate object. Like how am I supposed to, uh, <laughs> you can know? Do that right now? Huh? Can you sell can it? Can right do now? that right now? Can I do it right now? You still got yeah. it? Do I still got it? <laughs> this Sunday, Arrowhead. You think you're going to one-up me on Sunday? Arrowhead, you don't even know that I'm wetter. Whoa, that didn't even come out right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come out right. A, little bit, a, a little bit rusty. A little bit rusty. But a little, bit, a little rusty, but yeah. When I, when I came up with a character, I came up with an um, invisible character. And Vince right. McMahon, he was, laughing his, he was laughing his ass off. He loved it. And I called it, um, I called it Self. And then after doing that for a few weeks, uh, I went up to him. You know, you have to have balls. You know, I went up to I went up to Vince. I was like, I have an idea for a character. You know, it's, it's going to be. Um, I want to do a. I want to get a Muppet. It's going to look exactly like me. It's going to have grills. It's going to have braids. Um, and we're going to call it self, and only the WWE universe can see it, but the but the but the wrestlers can't see it. So it kind of be like an inside joke. Yeah, you, you ever seen on um, Big Mouth? It's, it's going to be similar to the. Um, what you call it, the homo monster. Yeah, yeah. So we were cracking jokes, and they were like, who are you talking to? And I'm talking to myself, which is really self the Muppet. You know, it was kind of, it had a lot of uh, levels to it. And he oh, loved yeah. it. He was like, oh, man, this is going to be great. It's going to be a kids. You know, you can, kids are going to be able to buy, like, self more. I can see it now. Good idea, JTG. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm hype. You know I'm saying? I'm, I'm like, oh, shit. Like and it. then um, uh, he gave me some numbers to call, and they gave me, they sent, they gave me, like, a, a like a some some type of sock puppet. I was like, "Oh, this is not my idea." It's like I'm not gonna, <laughs> you know, having a sock on my hand. It's like no, I was gonna have you know somebody else be the, yeah. the you know hire a comedian or somebody to you know I could interact with. Somebody. And it was like, eh, you're gonna have to pay for that every week. You know, they started getting cheap with me. And then I went to I went over their head and I went straight to the bins. Yeah. And that's what I put in my book. You know, it, there's levels to this joint. You just can't jump to the top dog. You have to work your you know, because people want to be, if it's successful, people want to be a part of it. Exactly. You know, I went straight yeah. to Vince. You have to go through the through the ranks. And I, and I learned that the hard way. So, and then that that idea, you know, slowly fizzled out. And they, you know, it wasn't my same exact idea, but they, mm-hmm. they gave it to somebody else. You got to work your way up. All right, so Jason, I wanted to ask, uh, what was your experience like for your first wrestling match, like official WWE wrestling match? What show was it? When was it? How old were you, and uh, how was the experience? All about? Oh, my first wrestling match, um, it was a dark match. And uh, we wrestled, who did we wrestle? I think we wrestled Charlie Haas and Big Vis, Big Viscera. You know, they wanted us to um, start getting used to being on the road and getting used to a WWE audience because we were, we were local, you know, Louisville. You know, we just, we traveled around Louisville and wrestled in front of, like, three max 500 people mm-hmm. so now we had to they wanted to see before they put us on tv they wanted to know if we could actually you know perform in front of an audience of that that uh of that um capacity of that caliber so um yeah we had a tag team match um i don't i don't i don't think i've in my whole entire career i've ever been nervous i've, I've always been anxious to get out there mm-hmm. you know i'm just an entertainer at heart you know besides being a, a wrestler i'm an entertainer at heart um so i was always confident confident in my ability and and um myself as a performer so i i never got nervous and 
you know, first time in front of a WWE audience, it was like crazy. It's like I've been, I was used to for the past two, three years, I've been wrestling in front of like 300 people. And then to go from 300 people to like thousands, it was like, it was like mind blowing. Then I got it. It was, a, it's an addiction. <laughs> was, was there anybody, would you say that like, uh, that puts you, took you under, under their wing or anything like that? Or do you feel like, it was- yeah. 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 Yeah, a few wrestlers took took uh, me and my tag team partner under their under their wing, and you know we traveled with them. You know, you know we we worked against Shelton Benjamin and uh, Charlie Haas. They were called the the world's greatest tag team. Mm-hmm. And while we were wrestling with them, we'd also travel together. We weren't supposed to because you're not supposed to have you're not supposed to uh, we're supposed to give off the illusion that we're that yeah. we're enemies. But yeah, yeah. But yeah. well, we broke kayfabe. That's what it's called. <laughs> and we rode together, and they and they taught us a lot um, in the ring and outside the ring. No, no, no. But uh, would you say general consensus that most most of them were like nice to you, cool with you, or were most people kind of like, eh, he's not cool yet? I can't. Work. Yeah, we had a lot of that. You know, we had a lot of uh, athlete. You know, we, me and Shad, um, we call it uh, heat in the business. You know, how could I put it in um, for non wrestling fans? Heat you should like have a, read his book, baby. Yeah, my whole uh, my first book was specifically just on heat. <laughs> um, but heat is like when you have like uh, bad blood with somebody, mm-hmm. you know. And when Shad and I came in, we we had a lot of jealousy because we were popular right off the bat. You know, usually when you go to WWE, you have to you know work your way up and you know warm up to the WWE audience. Mm-hmm. And like for some reason, Shad and I had a cheat code like. Our first, yeah. <laughs> our first uh, TV debut, we were fan favorites, and and I was told like you know when during our matches or even during our backstage segments, mm-hmm. um, you know ratings would go up. You know I don't want to toot my own horn, but we had we had, me and Chad had very good uh, on screen chemistry, and you know we were we we um we brought the hood to the WWE. That was something that's never been done before. And we didn't, we weren't like fakes, you know, we didn't have to act it. We were really from Brooklyn, New York, and we had swagger. We had, you know, and we were just fun to watch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you allowed to say who we had the most heat with besides Landscape and Trevor Murdoch? Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Like besides them, um I had heat with a few other wrestlers, but you know, we 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 settled it. You know, we have you have to be professional. Um, but off the top, you definitely had a lot of heat with, with <laughs> it so much heat. It led to getting fired the first time. Yeah, that was so fucked up. Because, like, imagine, like, like if a team did that to, like, DX or something, like, somehow managed to pull that off, like, they would get fired and the referee would get fired. But hey, it's all politics, like you it. said. It's yeah. all politics. And, and like, I- you did the right thing, like, Selling the referee shit and hitting your finish like that seemed like the logical thing to do, right? Yeah, staying in. Yeah, we 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 wanted to stay character and keep the show keep the show up. We're thinking exactly. like, you know, like like wrestlers. Like we didn't want to break character, but uh, yeah, you know, we we got in trouble. We got reprimanded for putting our hands on the ref. Oh wow! Well, we got, at what point did you get brought back? We like, came back six kind of months out? later. We came back six months later, the day after WrestleMania. To the one of the loudest uh, reactions I've ever, I ever got. It was a welcome back chat, and I was like, "Wow, they really love us. They they mess oh. with crime time." <laughs> Hold on one second. So uh, I'm not familiar with this incident. What happened to the referee? Some the, you guys beat up the referee. Okay, so the, the we didn't we didn't beat up the referee. So what happened was um, we were having a tag team match, and the the, the our opponents uh, was pulling a rib on us, which is called like a joke. Mm-hmm. Uh, prank. We had a lot of beef between us um, outside of the ring, not just inside the ring. And um, we had a we had an incident backstage. But you know, we were gonna say we we're gonna keep it professional. And uh, you know, what goes on in the ring, you know, we're gonna stay professional. Even I don't care what goes on behind the scenes. When we get in the ring, we have to be professional. We're representing a multi uh, million dollar company. So you know, whatever situation we have, we gotta dead that and be professional in the ring well they went another route and, and pulled a pull a rib on us and they had the referee in on it so there was this thing we were doing um every every weekend where i would uh they would knock me outside the ring mm-hmm. and you know how the referee counts one two three and if you get counted out when they reach the 10 you get counted out 
Yeah. I will roll in right at the, like around eight, you know, I'll get the, the audience, you know, behind me. Like, they're like, get up, JTG, get up. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, I'm milking it. I'm like, I'm making them feel sorry for me. You know, I'm climbing <laughs> slow. I'm trying to get my wits together. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I'll do this every night. I'll roll in at, at eight and then the crowd will get, will get excited. So I rolled in at eight. And when I rolled in at eight, the referee said, eight, nine, 10, and rung the bell and the match was over. I'm what? like, what? I'm like, what the fuck just happened? Like, what? What? And then Shad, he saw what was going on between the wrestler, our opponents, and the referee. You know, there was like some some and he saw it and he was like, he caught on to it. And he was like, oh, that's some BS. You know that, that and they they jumped down and left. They took their belts and they ran down the aisle. They were laughing at us and you know the referee was still in the ring and the crowd was like, the crowd was chanting bullshit, bullshit. And then you know Shad, you know, grabbed the ref and the crowd went went crazy. Because, you know, the crowd, the, the referee screwed us. Mm-hmm. So he put him up on his shoulder and like a Samoan drop. And we hit, I, I, you know, I saw that. I'm like, is this something that I'm not aware of? Like, what's going on here? Like, the referee rings <laughs> bell. Shad has him on his shoulder. I, <laughs> it makes sense to hit our finisher. You know, I, 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 hit, I hit our finisher. The crowd went crazy. And Chad, you know, he did a little extra and, you know, he took the referee's belt and so and shirt and sold it to the crowud. And that's our gimmick. <laughs> you know, that's our gimmick to sell stuff, take stuff from other's talent, superstars, and sell it to the crowd or auction it off. Mm-hmm. And we did that. Did you keep the money from that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Every single time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when we got backstage, uh, Shad, you know, was pulled to the side and, you know, he got cussed out. And um, I thought we were going to get a fine. You know, because everybody was getting, he was getting chewed out from every which direction. So I'm like, oh man, Monday this is gonna be a big fine. How much you think it is? Probably like you were saying, like five or ten k. We like, damn. I was thinking about <laughs> buying, from, buying some dumb stuff off of eBay, but all right, we think we're gonna get fined. We get called. We had a meeting, and they fired. And they fired us. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, and John Cena, you said chewed you out too. Huh? Like John Cena kind of went off on you too. Yeah, John Cena went off on uh, both of us, and that was like really like, damn, like the the the, the face of the company, you know, yeah. the champion at the time, you know, was was going off and like, how oh, stupid are you guys are to put your hands on the ref? I mean, what, what would we do in that situation? Like, <laughs> I mean, like I said, it's politics. Like, it just depends on who did it. Yeah, that's why it's like all bullshit. Like, I wouldn't be able to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of bullshit you have to deal with. Like me going back now, the money has to be. So good, I could I could eat bullshit and smile. That's pretty much what you're doing. When you, when you decide to be a professional wrestler, you have to learn to love the taste of shit and ask for more. You're like, mm, this is so good. Mm, let me get some more shit. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, you know, like people comment on my YouTube all the time. Like, you have a good look. You have a good personality. Like, you should be in WWE. And like, if I could work too, then in that ideal world, yeah, I should be. But that's like ten percent of it, and then ninety percent is just like, whose ass you kiss. Yep. Yeah. Is play the game. You have to play the game. <laughs> yep. <laughs> to be honest, like I feel like like what Eric does right now is perfect because now you have your, with social media, you have your own platform that you can put out your personality, and he can do these different characters that he does on YouTube. Oh. And he doesn't have to. He yeah. Deal with that. You know what I'm so that's that's uh that's dope. But yeah. <laughs> But to me, I'm like obviously, I'm not making like WWE money, but it would take me years to earn that if I was to work my way up in wrestling. What I'm earning now, so it just wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> how much time? How, how much time do you got left, at JTG? Let's go, man. Let's just go. With that we'll put that on pause. You know, we we we're flowing right now. We are flowing, so we not we don't want so, to flow. <laughs> so in your in your book. Uh, you talked to, in the second book, uh, you talked about this guy who said, like, some terrible, like, racist stuff. Um, can you talk about who that was? I, I don't like giving away who it is. I like dropping hints. I like if, I guess who, if I uh-huh. guess who it is, would you say it? I'll, I'll, uh, if you guess who it is, I'll, I'll touch my hat. <laughs> uh, was it? Nah, it wasn't. Fuck. Yeah, one, <laughs> more shot. One, more, one more shot, and then. Well, I mean, I have a couple ideas from talking, but I don't want to say their names in case I'm wrong. So I don't know. <laughs> but the uh, you still keep in contact with? Oh, uh, just sometimes. I, I occasionally hit him up, like if he's down to work out when he's in town, but he's, he's usually busy. 
Okay. And then cool. when I was wrestling, like I always asked him, like, would he vouch for me if I got a tryout and shit? And he was always down. So we've. we've oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thought, yeah, he would definitely do that. So okay, I have a question. At the time, let's say growing up, right? Growing up, yeah. Who was your favorite wrestler, or who who did you look up to in wrestling growing up? Uh, I went through like different phases. Like, of course, when I was two or three years old, you know, I was a Hulkamaniac. You know, the big Hulk Hulk Hogan fan. Not so much right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love what you wrote in the book. Uh, the start of the book. Um, uh, like you wrote as if you were Hulk Hogan. <laughs> huh? <laughs> like you know the start of the oh, book. Yeah, well, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was so funny. Okay, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know something? Uh, I always heard people talk about Hulk Hogan's physique. I thought he looked like shit, but am I, am I the only one who thought his physique looked like shit? No, nah, yeah, I mean he's pretty tall, so I mean, it's a hard he, frame to pull out if you think about it. He, he, he was, was just tall, very tall and 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 and, and puffy, like big. <laughs> he, had, he had like the, the the weird like slanted titties and stuff. Like everybody, oh, these guys jacked, and I'm like, I don't think I don't, I don't know if I'm jacked, but like to Ultimate me, Ultimate Warrior was jacked. Bro, Ultimate Warrior was jacked. Like to me, yeah, Ultimate Warrior, he might have had the best physique there. Uh, Triple H, Triple H was jacked. Um, yeah, I'd yeah. say. Uh, there was a few guys that I forget this guy's name. It, it was the French guy. What it was the, the French guy with the? He was Dino Bravo. No, the guy had an accent. I, I, I forget his name, but I, I mean, there was some. I mean, John Cena is Jack. John Cena is pretty Jack. Yeah, John Cena is Jack. Yeah, yeah, definitely Jack. Um, so go going back to the question. Yeah, my my. So I, it went through. It went Hulk Hogan, mm -hmm. and then from there it was Bret the Hitman Hart. I was I was a Hitman fan, and that's what he made me want to be like. Gave me like I really wanted to be a professional wrestler after that. Um, Which one passed away? His brother Owen Hart. Owen Hart passed away. Okay, okay. Yeah, Owen Hart passed away, and his tag team partner Jim the Anvil Neidhart. Um, mm -hmm. He's like the last surviving uh, member of the Hart Foundation. But Hart is still he's still kicking. I don't know what. Let's wait till twenty twenty is over to start celebrating because the yeah, way twenty twenty is going, geez. Uh, but yeah, Bret Hart. Then after Bret Hart, I went through my rock phase, um, big rock. And then after that, I'm just a compilation of all. Um, uh, when I when I started to become a professional wrestler, I I like I studied, um, not studied, but I was a big uh, Chris Benoit, okay. Jeff Hardy, and you know, I took elements from each wrestler. Like Jeff, Jeff Hardy's, uh, I don't know if you know who that is, but his. Um, his style, he had swag. You know, he wasn't the biggest wrestler, yeah, but he was a high flyer. He took a lot of, he took a lot of risk with the Takashi Six Nine uh, here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's where he got it from the Rainbow Warrior. That's what that's what they call Jeff Hardy. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I used to I used to want to do that before it was actually a thing because I used to see Jeff Hardy. I used to play one day. I want to go like dreads, dreads, buy it rainbow, and then like cut the sides off. You can't do that in Cali. You can't do that in Cali, buddy. <laughs> oh, dude! At one point, I wanted to paint my nails because of Jeff, and then I'm so glad I didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, but especially like I said before, not not in California. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Like we. What up? Mm -hmm. My favorite wrestler was always Brock Lesnar, and you said that you rode with him once to uh, from the gym or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was at the gym, That's and um, cool. I saw he saw we saw each other working out. He, he noticed me, and you know we talked. Like, oh, what you doing today? You know, this little small talk, gym small talk. You know. And then yeah. I was waiting um, for a cab, or, um, and he saw me like, you need a, you go to the arena, right? I'm like, yeah. He's like, jump in. I'll give you a ride. Like, Why didn't you ask? He's like, <laughs> I'm like, because you're Brock Lesnar. But, you know. I <laughs> so, so he was um, cool with you? Yeah, he was hella cool. Yeah, he's very cool. I thought uh, he looked like he, he would be mean, right? He like he would be kind of a dick. Nah, he, he, he cool, but he if you if you're if you're a dickhead, he, he reads your energy. Okay. That's with a lot of talent. That's like with a lot of wrestlers. You know, it depends on how you come, how you present yourself, and because every, every everybody wants to be your friend, everybody wants to be cool. You know what I'm saying? So you, you just got to read people's energy and, and and go from there. To me, Brock's like the biggest badass in wrestling. Like he never had to build rings. He never had to deal with any bullshit. He just comes in whenever he wants, makes the most money. That's like, that's the American dream. <laughs> you know, He's they try to do that badass. speaking out. They try to do that speaking out with him, and he didn't even he didn't even bat an eye. And it, it, it's, it's next, it went to the next uh, next right. person. <laughs> you might, All these wrestlers, I don't know if you guys heard of that. But like there, there was a speaking out uh, a movement that happened. Uh, was it last week? Last Wait, week somebody tried to speak out against Brock. Um, Terry Reynolds said that he uh, he exposed himself to her like years ago. And she was like, you know, she was offended. It was very offensive. And 
and they was trying to cancel Brock, and Brock was like, oh, if you, how you, cancel cancel Brock? Brock? you can't cancel <laughs> Brock. It's not happening. But a lot of other wrestlers, you know, a lot of wrestlers, um, Belvin T. Dream, Joey Ryan, uh, uh, the ROH wrestler, um, the, the villain, Marty, Scur- Marty Skrull. Yeah, a lot of wrestlers uh, got canceled. Uh, uh, um, it, it's fucked, though, how a lot of them, like, it seems like in AEW especially, like, they just get in trouble, like, before we even know if it's true or not. Exactly. Like, that's, 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 that's why I don't like, I mean, I'm not going to say I don't like it, you know, you know, there there are real victims out there that needs that that of need. Of course, to, but innocent until proven guilty, right? Yeah, you need that. You need yeah. to come with, with some proof because it's so easy to say uh, somebody did something to you. You have no proof, and then you're automatically a victim. Everybody feels sorry for you. Oh, this it took courage to speak up, but you could be lying though. Bro, <laughs> exactly. this this to- this topic is so controversial. Like, yeah, even talking about it, it is like you know, it's weird because like you don't want to say. You don't want to the be wrong thing. Yeah, yeah, you have to be politically correct. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be sensitive, but it's like, yo, the issue with this is there's no real rules. There's no real rules. Literally, you, you could be inside, right? And she said, stop. If you move half a centimeter, that can technically <laughs> be, be raped, technically. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... There's a lot so- of things could be raped. And that's what I'm saying. Like, like, I feel like there was a time where rape, everybody agreed on rape. It yeah. was forcefully like, no, I don't want it. Here, come here. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then now it's at a point where it's like these little things, and it's like nobody has ever said, "Oh, uh, can I put it in your butt?" Like, no, you just take it out and do, and do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not or like, "Oh, ask." Like nobody ever. Bro, where I'm from, oh, you from New York too? If you actually go, hey, imagine you go on a date and you go home, like, yo, like, do you consent? Like, can we have sex? They, they would walk the fuck out. Yeah, <laughs> like, what? It's a total turn off. Bro, I, I, I had a girl. I was in high school. I was like a sophomore, and then I, I had leaned in. and I was like, yo. Can I kiss you? And she sucked it. <laughs> no, don't ever ask a girl that. That's like the biggest turn off. Like it's like you know what I'm saying. So like, it, there's like unwritten rules, and like you can't just erase that. And then now it's like, like they don't even like. Jay, uh, what do you think about Keith Lee speaking out? Who? Keith Lee. Who the hell is that? <laughs> you know the huge three hundred pound guy in NXT. He said that he got raped by a woman. <laughs> oh, come on, the Big Brother. Nah, 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 yeah, NXT. The Big. He said he got raped about. Was it a joke? Was he serious? No, he was dead serious. But he says he got like drugged, and she took him to his hotel room or something. I don't know. But. Bullshit. Oh. No, a woman can't rape a man. Cardi like, B- like, how, how, how does she make you the card? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's gonna be hard to do. That's gonna be hard. That's gonna be hard. Yeah, gonna be hard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Cardi B used to drug guys and take their money back in the Bronx. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, but okay, so I, I also have another her. Why is she not canceled? I also have another question. So you know how all these wrestlers are like openly liberal? Like all of them seem to be like 100% liberal. But we know Vince is working with Trump and yeah. he's not. So how, how does this work? How do they all like, why are there so many, why are wrestlers scared to be like openly conservative when fucking Vince is? Man, social media is it's, it's the wild, wild west. There's no rules. You, you, I, I was if you're on social media, I would stay away from like these type of hot topics. You know, I have my opinion on a lot of things. Like even with the with the whole Black Lives Matter, I, you know, I know how how I feel. You know, I, of course, I, I Black Lives Matter, but just putting that hashtag, I don't like follow trends and you, you just open up yourself to a whole bunch of stuff. I, I don't want to deal with it right now. Like with so. Social media, you're also being a celebrity. Uh, to, uh, CM Punk said it best. Like with, with social media, uh, you're, a, you're, you're a celebrity on social media. You could post something, and then that's pretty. The, the, you're, it's like it's kind of similar to lifting up your window on a busy street and letting people hurl insults at you. You can't close your window after that. It's like mm-hmm. you just gotta accept it. You know, you can't close your window. People are hurling stuff. If you say something back, oh, he's a what? Do, what do you call it? Uh, he's a he's he's a uh, He's a misogynist, or he he's homophobic. It's like what? Mm-hmm. Like what are you talking? To? Like I remember I got into it with somebody, a female on um a Roman Wayne, a Roman Reigns uh, fan on Twitter, and I said something, and she called me a, a misogynist. I'm like, what? How did you even pull that from from the from the post I made? And it's like, you know what? And then all her friends started coming and joining. Yes, you're a misogynist, JT. I'm like, whoa, whoa, this is not what I, I have to stop. <laughs> I don't even debate or argue on social media anymore. Some, sometimes, I, I know we're at a time where sometimes if you don't talk about things, 
people like, you get in trouble. Why don't you tell them? Like, like well, first of all, don't tell me what, what the hell I need to post. Talk exactly. About. But some. Yeah, I, I saw AJ Styles got blasted for not saying anything. It's like what? Like, what? <laughs> you can't force me. You can't force me. To, but but it's like this. Some topics, honestly, from a marketing standpoint, are best left un, 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 untalked about because. So people have some really strong opinions and it's to a point it pulls you in and then you start getting mad and like you're going back and forth and then after it's done you're like what, what the fuck am i doing i'm going back and forth with a dude with no profile picture like exactly what am i doing like I, when it I, comes I, to yeah. religion politics yeah. um but my thing is like topics, leave it alone yeah. Like it's not even fans. Like like I said, like Austin Aries, low key, they said that they don't like wearing masks, and now all the other wrestlers like have heat with them. Like, what the fuck? It's, it's that whole uh, Mean Girls Club type of. Uh, <laughs> 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 he got heat, so everybody got to join up, join in on the heat. It's like, man, I don't give a, I don't give a shit. When it right. w- when it comes to uh, politics, uh, when it comes to religion. And now, now, if it comes to race, if it yeah. comes to uh, uh, sexual, I guess you call it sexual abuse or rape or anything like that, when it comes to these four topics, man, you make a comment on it, it's just like... You're, you're not like, going to make anybody happy. You're not going to make everybody, like, nothing you can say to make any, like, you're just exactly. asking for it. Well, the problem is uh, people are finding shit that people said, like, 10 years ago as a joke on Twitter and trying to, like, ruin their careers over it. Bro. Yeah. It's say, just, say something nice about, like with Trump, right? Say what's the nicest thing you say about Trump? A po- say something positive about Trump, just off the top of your head. Uh, he's rich. He's rich. He's rich put up. that on. If you was to put that, if I was to put that on Twitter right now, you get blasted. You get blasted. I would get bombarded. What do you mean he's rich? You trying to say? And it's like, whoa! I just yeah. <laughs> it's a random post. Or, or, or the, let's say if he did something, uh, if he if he he releases. Uh, Anybody liked up? He, he let's say if he would have released Tuki Williams, and you'd be like, "Oh, thank you, Trump." Everybody would like destroy you because you, you mean thank you, Trump. You just can't say that's one. That's one black person. You think that's you think the war is over? <laughs> <laughs> you can't. It's like <laughs> you can't, bro. You, you can't. You, you can't be a free. Yeah, yeah. You have any any opinion. You know what's so funny? Like he called the people who were looting thugs, but yet if you go back and when there were riots during Obama's time, he said the same exact word to describe those people. But there was no outrage for that. But there's all this outrage for Trump. Well, it's all if, selective. <laughs> if you say looting, looting means stealing. Like if you say if you say protesting, you know, if you say protest is that's different. Right. You say looter. Well, if you're looting, you're stealing. So it's like you know, what I'm saying it's like two different things. But I think I, I think we live in a time that's extremely sensitive. And then, uh, about bringing things back from the past, it's like this, right? Things change every couple of years. Like we used to say midget. And it, it wasn't offensive. We used oh, to, we, yeah, <laughs> or, like, or, or like guys used to say trannies, or like, oh, that's a tranny. Like, and it wasn't, it wasn't derogatory. It, it was just a word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, now the w- fucking women's champion in AEW is a transgender. I know the, the times you live in. I, you know, I was watching on Netflix. I was watching Delirious, a Raw. I mean, um, Eddie Murphy's Delirious. Yeah. Okay. Still hilarious. He would have. Can't watch. He couldn't do that now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> he said, the F word. He, said uh, he said he said faggots and I'm like oh my gosh and I'm like hold on now like, yeah in the 80s he's like I like to look I like to know where the faggots are so I like to you know I like to switch my stance so they don't get a long glance at my ass just, just by <laughs> you can't that, say that just huh? by saying that this video is gonna get demonetized <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> bleep it out bleep it out my bad I don't care. I don't care. I mean, the the best videos get demonetized, and, and we probably got demonetized uh, talking about Corona, anyways. We we'll mentioned that earlier. Every video yeah, I I'll do on my prank channel gets demonetized now. YouTube's policies are just fucked now. Ridiculous. You can't say the c word. What's that? Cunt? No, COVID. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but basically, you can't say or do anything. But if you fast forward five years, so, Jay, uh, in in my last prank video, I basically did like a little bump. At the gym as like a joke, and yeah. they called it a dangerous stunt, so they demonetized the video for that. So like, are they they demonetizing WWE too? <laughs> like, what? Wow, <laughs> they just don't want to pay you. They just don't want to pay you. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Probably. a lot of these top YouTubers, or like like Nelk, Nelk, they don't make any money from their videos. They just market. Yeah, but they make a shit ton for merch. 
Oh yeah, I mean yeah. yeah. So, you, so you just you, if you want to get a real fan base, you just on YouTube, you just got to stop giving a fuck about like the ad money and just put out good shit, and I, you'll get the money in the end. I, yeah. and you know who uh, Russell is, Eric Russell? Yeah. So, so uh, I found out he didn't make any money from YouTube because I, I kept, I, I kept DMing him like, how do you use all this music? Like, use all this music. I'm like, how do you get paid? He's like, I don't. Simple. I'm yeah, like, he'd rather just get a video. Yeah, he, 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 he better off making like crazy edits and having like the, 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 the like the popular songs and all of this, and he just yeah. sells the merch. And he's like, okay, so that's that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. But yo. Uh, I want to tell you, uh, I started using your beard comb. It's a little shriveled up right now because I, I watched it, but it, that, that shit works, bro. That shit works. Oh, yeah. Get, get your beard on point. I only use it on special occasions, you know. You know I'm going out. I'm going on a, a oh, I, I didn't even know you have a beard comb because I use a fucking hairbrush for my beard. I'm going to buy that shit. Oh, no, sure. I, got, I, got a hot, I got a hot comb on, a hot beard comb. The and it's like it's like a nice good you know not too not too much heat because you don't want to get split ends or breakage it's just just enough heat yeah. you know to make your beard more fuller it gets yeah. like, okay like my 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 beard gets some new length man and then, okay i see you i see you <laughs> <laughs> what else you got if you want to uh plug anything um what you got going on sexy as hell beard care and skin care you know get your get your skin glowing and popping with my uh Black seed oil um, infused formula. You know, I use I use my products all the time, every uh, every day. My skin looks good, my beard looks good, so I'm I'm living proof that it works. So go to s s a h beardcare dot com. We got over twenty five twenty five different scents: um, mango, strawberry lemonade. Imagine pulling up to a booty call. And you know, she gives you a hug, and you're like, "Oh, what's that? What's that? Oh, that's the strawberry lemonade." They're like, "Oh my gosh!" You know, it is overwhelming. Your beard, your skin is like, "Oh my gosh!" <laughs> Just throw them all off. <laughs> what else you got uh, going on right now? Um, working on a um, got a few projects I'm working on. Like I mentioned before, I'm working on a a, a biceps book. You know, I, you know, I, I get a lot of compliments on on my arm. You know, you got big arms, man. You got big arms. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. And, yeah, you, yeah. in person, you were so much bigger than I expected you to be. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate, I appreciate that. Maybe because yeah. on TV, you were always next to Shad, so obviously you look small yeah. in comparison. Yeah. But in person, I was like, holy shit. And also, yeah. for, for everybody watching, right now, this is him after like three months of like not even working out. So I know, man. It's great to be back in the gym. <clears throat> so I'm launching an ebook with um with training videos just specifically targeting arms i haven't came up with a name of the book yet it's going to come to me um me and lp we're working on a, a, a tv series script no, no, i'm excited no. about that and i'm still working on my app i launched my app on my birthday mm -hmm. and um we're adding some more features to it it's called airsay you know that's it gives you the ability to um to share uh audio memes or images so yeah. you could record your voice and add sound effects while you're talking mm -hmm. to pictures. And I have a library full of uh, today's most popular sound effects and catch phrases. And, you know, I'm going to update it some more, you know, ever since the quarantine thing, so many memes went viral. I got to get the, uh, you about to lose your job. I got to add that in there. <laughs> uh, do you have any plans of wrestling again anytime soon? Yeah, I got a bunch of shows uh, lined up. You know, a lot of things got, uh, since the quarantine thing and you know Shad passing away, a lot of shows got rescheduled and and moved around. Um, but I got a few shows coming up. I um, so they just announced today um, my match in New Jersey. I forgot my the name of my my opponent, but people are going crazy. They're, they're like, oh my gosh, they, you know they're hype about it. So before it was just a, it was a booking to me, but it was, but seeing the reaction that fans are like, oh shoot, JTG is working this guy. Um, you know, it's getting me excited too. So I'm going to have to do my research gotcha. on him and, you know, start putting some uh, ideas in my head how, how I'm going to blow the roof off that night. <laughs> you gotta get Didn't you guys uh, actually do something with Rikishi uh, at Knox Pro too at one point? After I left, I think I remember I think seeing we had that. A show, I think we had a show there at his school. I wrestled a freaking octopus. That was very weird. It was a battle royal. Yeah, I, I, that was like Sin Bodhi's. Yeah, Sin Bodhi's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that shit was weird. I did one of those shows too. Yeah. So, uh, uh, how was it working with Rikishi? Like, how do you like him in general? 
Oh, right, Ra- Rakishi, he, he, he's big, big, big brother. Um, he looked, he always would look out for us. He always wanted us to work his uh, sons. He's like, man, crime time is <laughs> doing those, man. I want, you know, y'all need to get back in there, man. That's what the fans want. They want to see you against my boys, man. And you know, the the the, the um the Usos were big fans of us. You know, I remember when they weren't even signed yet. You know, Umaga brought them on the road, and they were marking yeah. out for us. You know, <laughs> oh, that's sick. Yeah, I mean, I didn't have the best experience with him, but that's because when I got, I just got into the business when I first got there, so I knew nothing. So uh-huh. like, I was completely oblivious to like all the shit you have to do. Yeah, there's so many unwritten rules, uh, locker room etiquette. If you don't know, you have to be smartened up. Like you, somebody, you have to get under somebody's <laughs> wing because I made so many stupid mistakes too. Like, I, I remember ridiculous. one day we came into practice and like today we're just like cleaning the fucking facility. And I just yeah, like quietly sneaked, sneaked out and went home. I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? Why am I cleaning up? Yeah, I want to learn how to play. <laughs> yeah. I, and I it, didn't pay you to clean toilets. I wanted to learn how to be a wrestler. Yeah, pay, pay your dues. That's what it's part of me to be a wrestler. Trust me. I cleaned a lot of toilets myself. <laughs> oh, I bet. <laughs> cleaned a lot of toilets. Um, yeah, that's the wrestling business. Paying, paying your dues. Yo, Jay. And like that, they would ask to set up rings. I would, I would think that they're like asking, so I would like show up for a few hours if I could. But like, I didn't realize it's like a mandatory thing that everybody yeah. like has to do. Yep, man. yep. hazing, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Jay. I think we've been What's on up? about about an hour right now. I, I don't want to hold you on too long. I know you, uh, you, you got some plans after this, but we gotta get, we, we gotta get like a collab, man. Me and Eric want to get like a like an arm workout with you. Perfect. Cause you're in the oh, army. yeah, cool. Yeah, definitely. Also, I wanna I wanted to ask you for a little favor, maybe. What's you up? know Ryback? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really want to get on his podcast, and he's good friends with like my manager and shit. So, like, I've been trying to get into contact with him. So, yeah, yeah I want to get on his podcast too. So, I want to work on both of them. <laughs> yeah, I listen. I listen to his podcast. Um, he did one. With yeah, my I listen to his podcast every week. It's fucking dope. Yeah, he he motivated me to um. Uh, with uh, I had a little thing, the battle ropes. So he was talking about his conditioning. You know, he couldn't. He he had horrible conditioning, and he started doing the battle ropes. And I was similar with me. I had horrible condition. Like after like 30, 45 seconds of the battle ropes, you know, I just you know, oh my god. <sighs> and then I started you know working at it every week. He said he got up to uh, five minutes, so that was my goal. And this past week, I think it was was it yesterday? Yeah, it was actually yesterday. I did five minutes straight on the battle ropes. Just killing oh, shit. it. So yeah, my next goal this Friday, I'm gonna try to double. I'm gonna try to do ten minutes, and I found out what yeah, my yeah, you goal have to because because he's like three hundred pounds. So <laughs> yeah, you have to have great condition. Being a professional, especially like big guys, we're not we're not like those those acrobats. You know, when you after, when you when you're over like uh, two thirty, you're considered a big guy. <laughs> professional well, nowadays, <laughs> yeah, now, yeah, nowadays. So nowadays yeah, you're, like my- pounds, you're like the great Cully. I know, right? <laughs> so I need to make sure my conditioning is, is good. I'm proud of myself. You know, I'm able to do five minutes straight. And I could have did more, but I think I, I didn't have enough. Uh, the key is to have a great playlist while you're doing it because I just tune out and just oh, yeah. becomes auto. How long can you do on the battle ropes, Eric? I, I haven't done it since I stopped wrestling, which was 2016. So I don't even fucking know. Oh, damn. Uh, baby? We're definitely not five minutes, that's for sure. Not five minutes? Definitely not, no. <laughs> I mean, Baby, how much you think? You, how long you think? How many minutes you think you do straight? When I'm lean, I'm actually an athlete, so I, I, I got into that. So when I'm lean, I go pretty long. I, I never did it for an extended amount of time, but I, I used to do my last contest prep. I was doing like the circuit with like battle ropes and the little TRX thing, and then the okay, okay, ball bounce. So uh, at this rate right now, <laughs> I'm probably not. Maybe not more than a minute, maybe. But Damn. Like, okay. When when I'm in shape. I I might I don't want to get carried away. I, I might be able to get five, man. I, maybe, but okay, it, it, it's easier said than done. It's I could sit here and say I could do ten minutes, but can I actually? Our do boy, it? our boy LP, he did six. He did. I did five minutes. He was like, okay, and he did six minutes. I'm like, oh, this motherfucker here. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Keep it, but the thing is that, like, if you're smaller, I'm yeah, gonna, yeah, it, it's gonna play in your. Face. It's more impressive when you got some muscle. When you got some big, like you know, like damn. Because we're not known for our for our cardio, you know. Hulk, Hulk Hogan, yeah. Ultimate Warrior, they didn't they didn't wrestle too long. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, but the thing is, like, I could fucking still watch those matches, but like all the super kick back and forth bullshit, like I like I don't I can't get into that stuff. I don't know yeah, because like, back then the char- the characters were larger than life. You you were watching it 
because of the story they told, you know, the characters, you know, good versus evil, you know, they were more the look, you know, it was the larger than life look, not even just characters, they had a larger than life look, like Ultra Warrior, Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, you know, Macho Man wasn't the, the biggest, but he came out with the, his, his persona, his charisma, you wanted to see this guy tell a story in the ring. Now these guys, they're not really focused on telling a story in the ring, is is just, look at all the cool moves yeah. I could do, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could and and like see, seeing two guys who I can probably beat them both in a fight, like it's just exactly. Kind of kill me, I don't know. Is yeah, that growing up and, and especially with um, watching like wrestlers had to be larger in life characters. They had to be larger in life uh, physical, physically. You know, and I, I wish they had same mentality. Were. Huh? Yeah. I wish they still were. Yeah, I still keep that mentality. Like when I go, when I go, when I travel, you know, people look at me. They say. I don't know what you do, but you do something. You play football? No, I, I don't. I don't not football. Right. Are you an actor? No. Mm -hmm. And then I, then I, I let them keep going because I don't like telling people I'm a <laughs> wrestler because it opens up a can of worms. Like, oh my god, you're a professional wrestler. My, my nephew loves wrestling. Oh, uh, you know the Rock? It's like, <sighs> <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> Is that, it real? that's how you want. That's it hurt. Like, I don't know who you are, but you're somebody. Huh? Like the guys nowadays, like the guys nowadays, if they told somebody they're a pro wrestler to like some random kid, they'd be like, "They wouldn't yeah, be right. yeah. <laughs> Really? I can whoop your ass, yeah. <laughs> you, you guys, the, the, the video is about to cut, so we're going. It, it might actually cut, but before we even get to wrap it up, let, let me uh, see. Let me see if I can wrap it up in time. But yo, Jay, thanks for coming on. We we gotta. We no gotta problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you so much. I could fucking talk all day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And we we gotta get we gotta get a collab a little workout or something, man. For sure. Yeah, definitely do it. We got we gotta do it at the Mecca. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> All right, Jay. You guys free this Saturday? Huh? No, not this. It's Fourth guys... of July. Oh, exactly. I forgot. Yeah, that forgot. happened this week. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, probably like uh, uh, Monday, maybe. Uh, I'll pro. I might be in Arizona, but if I'm not, then for sure. We'll we'll, we'll, we'll work it out. We'll, we'll we'll definitely make it happen. Yeah, we'll definitely set that. All right, Jay. Good looks, man. Appreciate you. No problem, man. Have a good one, guys. All right, you too. Peace. All right.